This is a lesson on the precise definition of a limit, and let's just get right into it, actually. So here's where we're going to start, um, just to kind of motivate. Why, why do we need this? What is this precise definition? So I've got this graph with a hole, and I want to know what is the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Okay, so if you have been in calculus so far, the way that we kind of do this is we follow the graph on the left and on the right, and we say, where does it look like this value at x equals 1? What, what does it look like, the y value that it's approaching? So if I come up to here and then I come over here, well, it sure looks like this is getting pretty darn close to 1. So I say that that looks like the limit. And I want to point out that rationale. It looks like this is what's happening. And that is incredibly imprecise language for mathematics, actually. If you think about it in the career of your, your mathematical time, there has probably never been a time where it says, well, it looks like that's the answer. And it's actually very rare that we can just use a, a graph to prove something. A lot of times we have to be able to back it up algebraically. And so there's, there's kind of this inherent issue in looking at this. Because what if, what if at some microscopic level, right at one, what if the graph somewhere actually veered up and then veered back down? What if I can't see that? Then that would totally change the limit. So philosophically, this was actually a big argument in the history of mathematics. This is the idea that limits are a little imprecise in our current understanding. It's not good enough to say it looks like it's going to that. And so what we want to do then is we want to ask how can we be sure we found the right limit. So looking at this particular graph and getting rid of this little piece here, one way that we could think about this is we could think about, well, I know that there's a hole here, so I know that this, this function does not exist at x equals 1, but I feel pretty confident like that around this limit, like, the, like everything exists around this point, right? So if I could kind of illustrate how I can get, you know, close enough and, and get into like a region around this point, then maybe I could feel a little bit more confident about my limit. And so that's actually the exact game that we're going to play, except I'm going to play a little more precisely now. So I'm going to tell you guys a story. <laughs> it's a fascinating story. And we're going to use the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 1, which we know how to evaluate this, right? So I chose a limit that's really, really simple. So the, the thing here is to not get hung up by the limits, but to really try to sink our teeth into the precise definition of a limit. So here's this idea. I say to you, I get that you think that that's the limit, but I don't believe you. And I would believe you if you could kind of prove me that, prove to me that if we get within a certain tolerance around four, that some X values exist that would still get us pretty close to four. So more specifically, what I want you to do is I want you to show me um, we can find x values that are within 0.5 of the limit. Okay, so here's where our, our game, our story kind of starts. So, like I said, it's not good enough that now that I can just kind of precisely draw these values on this graph. I'm going to be a skeptic and say I don't believe that this works. So instead what I want you to do is I want you to get me within 0.5 of this limit. So let's see if we can get you know, within a certain distance of it and find x values that, that would correspond to this distance. And then, you know, because we're this distance around the limit, I believe that we're like getting closer and closer to it. And so I believe then we found the right limit. Okay, so if I think about 0.5 on each side, so of the limit, that would be from 3.5 to 4.5. So just using the, the stuff we found from the, our limit calculation. Okay, so this little zone in here we need to find x values that land us in here. 
So this is the zone I want to be around in my limit. So I need to find x values that will kind of land us there. And if I can find x values that exist, then I can feel a lot more confident that I found the right limit. So what I can do is I can actually just use the graph to help us figure this out, right? So I can use this kind of a, just a guideline. And so these x values that you see down here in the green, these will get us in that desired region that I was just talking about. And I can really easily find these in this case. Um, the x values that will get us there are 2.5 and 3.5. Pretty simple calculation to figure that out. So I say you, you, okay, say, so I told you, sorry, I'm forgetting the characters in this story. <laughs> so I tell you that I want to be within 0.5 of the limit. Show me some x values that would get me within 0.5 of the limit, and then I will believe that we have the right limit. So you find me those x values, um, and so these are our desired values, and so now you're like, okay, we're all good here. But I am a skeptic, and I don't think you're right, and I want to try closer to the limit. So I say 0.5 is not really that close to the limit. You know, you could still have maybe at some point the, li the limit veers off. Maybe we don't have the right limit. So I now want you to show me we can find x values within 0 0.01 of the limit. Okay, so that's fine. Um, we we kind of know the idea behind this. So I'm going to use pink this time. So I've got a, a slightly tighter region around my limit now. So I can figure out what those values are. So if I want to be within 0.01 of the limit, that means I want to be between 3.99 and 4.01 of my limit of 4. And so once again, I've got this, this region here. So we need x values that land us in this area once again. And so once again, I can kind of use the graph to help guide me here and figure out what my x values are. Um, so we need these x values that are down here. And then once again, I can pretty easily find these values. So if I'm somewhere between 2.99 and 3.01, I will be in that desired area in the, the limit. So, you know, it, it seems like then that's probably close enough and, and we're very close with, within the limit. So I'm feeling pretty confident or you're feeling pretty confident. Okay, but <laughs> I'm a skeptic and I still don't think you're right. So I say, let's try closer. And so now I say, well, you know what, like at 0.01, maybe something weird happens at a microscopic level. So let's go down to 0.001 of the limit. And now you're like, ah, oh, seriously, but you do it. You do it because you're a nice person. <laughs> so I get within a tighter region around that limit. And then once again, I, I kind of use the x axis to help me figure this out. And I back into this and I find those two x values. And I'm like, hey, look, see, now we are in, you're like, hey, look, see, we're, we're in that desired region. So I probably found the right limit, right? Because I can get closer and closer to it. How close do you really want? Leave me alone. And so <laughs> I'm a skeptic and I still don't think you're right. So I say, let's try closer. And you're like, go away. I hate you. And then I'm like, show me we could find x values within 0. 0.00001 of the limit. And then you're like, arg, no, you will never stop. You're going to make me late for my scavenger hunt. I'm going to prove this the most general way possible. And so this leads us to where the precise definition of a limit is actually going to come in. So instead of me dictating numbers to you to have to go and find, you know, corresponding x values for, let's just talk about generalities now because it's kind of like we're doing the same thing over and over with this graph, right? So instead of coming up with a number, let's just call this epsilon. I want to be within epsilon around the limit. Okay, so I've got my little area around this. So before I had a certain way of kind of calculating these two numbers. So if I want to be with epsilon, within epsilon of this, I really just need to take four plus or minus epsilon on each side, right? That's really all I was doing with those, those tolerances that I had before. Okay. And so from here, I can do the exact same thing I was doing before. So I can kind of use the graph and draw down to figure out, you know, there are some x values. And using this formula, I can actually find a, a general way to describe these x values. It's going to be 3 plus or minus epsilon on each side. And so now you tell me, okay, choose whatever you want for epsilon. And then the x values are going to be 3 plus epsilon and 3 minus epsilon. And then I'm like, dang, way to go you. <laughs> and so this is basically the idea behind the precise definition of a limit. It's this idea of 
we want to actually be able to have an assurance that I can get as close to the limit as I want. I, I can zero in on this as tightly as I want and I will always find corresponding X values that will get me around that limit. So it's fine if at one specific point this function does not exist, all the other points around it are going to exist and that's actually what's telling us that we have the right limit. And we do it in this super general way. So now I can actually show you the precise definition of a limit. So this says the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l if for every epsilon greater than zero there exists a corresponding delta greater than zero such that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon when zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c which is less than epsilon. epsilon. So what the heck does this mean? <laughs> So this is always kind of a rite of passage in a lot of calculus courses to learn this definition and to really understand what it means. So it's very common, by the way, to, to read this and, and feel like you're reading Greek. And by the way, you literally are reading Greek, right? Epsilon and Delta are, are Greek letters. But to understand this, it takes work. And things like this actually really help to kind of expand your mind and to expand your thinking. So it's natural to kind of look at this and say like, Ugh, but you know, you really actually want to try to work at it because that's where a lot of personal growth comes from. So I struggled a lot with this definition when I first learned it, but eventually it did start to make a lot of sense. And it only makes more sense if you keep working at it and trying and trying and trying. So let's take a look at this. So part of this, we, we already have talked about, right? This epsilon. So the idea of this epsilon that's exactly what comes from kind of this distance up here. So this is this is where we were talking about epsilon at first, right? And epsilon is always talking about kind of a, a distance around your y values that you want to get within. So you come up with some distance around here. And the idea is that if we found the right limit, we should be able to get as tightly around this limit as possible and still find x values that correspond to it. So Previously, when I was talking about this, I was talking about x values, but what the definition is actually talking about is distance. So this is saying that you come up with an epsilon and there exists a corresponding delta. So I was saying corresponding x values, and now I want to basically tighten up what we were talking about before. So now instead of having these general x values, instead what we're more interested in is just this distance between the x value and the distance that you need to go around it. So from here to here, this little piece here, so I'll, I'll, I'll just highlight it in pink so hopefully you can see that, that is the distance delta and that's actually what you're interested in. Because the way that this is stated, the way that this is stated is saying that you get within epsilon around kind of your your y values and then you, you wanna get within delta around your, your um, your C value, so as X approaches C. So if I want to just now tweak this slightly for our definition, this was a more specific example. So if I just change some of the letters, so this value here, this is what we think is the limit. And so then we come up with this distance around here, that's epsilon, and this is epsilon on one side. So I name this distance epsilon, and then so my, my C, so if you go back to the definition here, so it's talking about X approaches C. So that's talking about X approaches C. We think that the limit is L. We have to be able to find this distance delta around that C. So this is kind of a more general picture of, of how to interpret this definition here. Now, places where this type of concept actually exists, this is a great thought exercise and one of the best ways that you can understand this is by coming up with some sort of example that helps you. I'd highly recommend in the comments if, if you're thinking of something that maybe resonates with you of, oh, this kind of reminds me of, of this, write it in the comments, share it. I've had a lot of car guys go through my classes and they like to talk about um, tolerances when you're doing certain adjustments with your car. So you could think of something like that, but I've heard of a lot of other examples that people come up with. And I think it'd be really cool if we had a list of them in the comments just to help people. Okay, so 
the last thing I want to state here is that there are really two types of limit problems, at least if you're in my class. So the first one is the type where epsilon is some given number and then you have to find a specific delta. And so that's basically what we were doing at the beginning of this story. So in this case, I was giving you an epsilon. So in this case, this was the epsilon equals 0.5. So we found the x values, but the actual delta, the delta is just the other distance. And in this case, my delta would have been 0.5. Or for this other example, so this was when my epsilon was equal to 0.01. So I found the x values, but what I really need to know is what my delta is. And so my delta in this case would be equal to 0.01. So that's the first type of example where you actually find that specific numerical delta. The second type of problem is one where you don't have like a specific epsilon. It's, it's more of that general case where you're just trying to do everything in terms of formulas. And so that's where the story ended, right? Where you finally said, look, I'll just come up with a formula for it so that you'll stop asking me this. And so again, we're not looking for the X values here. We're actually just looking for how would you describe that delta distance. And in this particular example, the delta would actually just be equal to epsilon. So if you get within, epsilon around your limit, then you just need to be within epsilon around that x value as well, and then you'll be good to go. So I have a bunch of examples where I go through this. I'm trying to keep this video a little bit shorter, so I just wanted to explain what the precise definition of a limit is here. But if you're looking for examples on those two things, I have some example videos on that, so I highly recommend you check those out. And otherwise, if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to drop me a comment. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.